Welcome to Real Estate Coaching Radio, starring award-winning real estate coaches and number one international best-selling authors, Tim and Julie Harris. This is the number one daily radio show for realtors looking for a no BS, authentic, real-time coaching experience. What's really working in today's market, how to generate more leads, make more money, and have more time for what you love in your life. And now your hosts, Tim and Julie Harris. We are back, and today Julie and I are going to be talking about something that is on everyone's mind, and that something is, of course, inflation. And what we're specifically going to be focusing on is how inflation really is affecting not just your household budget and your business budget, but really what you should expect in the next 6 to 12 months as pertains to real estate. So Julie and I spent a lot of time drilling down on a lot of these points, and we're just going to jump right in and start giving you some of these points, but we're also wanting you to understand that the reason that we're hopefully taking your education about inflation to the next level is so that you can calm the nerves of your prospective buyers and sellers. Because remember, a lack of information causes people to act or they they feel fear. And that's what's happening right now. And of course, the fear is also going to be, um, I think, uh, even more so because we have an election coming up and all the rest of it. And uh, yeah, negative news everywhere is making people feel very fearful. So we're going to give you guys the facts. We're going to tell you how to translate the facts for the, sol- for the sake of the real estate industry. And then we're hoping then that will calm your nerves as well as giving you courage and permission to calm the nerves of others. That's right. And in fact, one of our coaching clients mentioned to me that he listens very closely to these, he calls them the talking points when we do an education piece like this, and that it has given him a lot more confidence talking about real estate versus when he wasn't really sure about it. So, Well, but Julie, you actually bring up something really interesting. I mean, you and I can talk to the cows come home about mindset, motivation, script skills, lead follow-up, all these sales types things. And that's really what the focus of Premier Coaching is. And we certainly have done, I don't know, maybe thousands of podcasts about those particular topics. But if you're you're not feeling confident yourself. It, it just goes back to the whole concept that if you're not optimistic that tomorrow's going to be better than today, you're actually not going to take the actions you otherwise would have. In other words, you will make tomorrow worse than today because you didn't do today what you didn't want to do when you did want to do it at the highest level. Now, if you're filling your mind with a whole bunch of bad news, then of course you're not going to feel that optimistic. Of course you're not going to you know, take the actions necessary. Of course you're not going to go out there and help people and make money. And then guess what happens to you six 12 months from now, a lot worse than it is today. You guys see how this is all essentially like a mental Rubik's cube. So when you start with the facts and you learn how to decipher you know, the truth from the Mickey Mouse, then you will have a hell of a lot more confidence. So Julie, let's get right into it. Yeah. So the annual U.S. inflation rate was a, was little changed last month. These are up to date stats and figures. It was 8.2 percent year over year, compared with August's 8.3% year-over-year reading as the pace of price increases remains at a multi-decade high, causing pain for many households. As inflation continues to weigh on American households, people have already adjusted what they'll eliminate from their budgets in the coming months to keep their expenditures in check. Now, for example, here's some numbers for you. Americans are cutting back most, 53% say higher prices have caused them to cut back on dining out in the last six months, while 39% say they've cut back on driving, canceled a monthly subscription, 35%, or switched from a brand name product to a generic one, 32%. I know we do that at the grocery store now. Uh, Used cars are selling for 42% more than last year. Gas prices are at an all-time high of $4 to $7 per gallon, Depending on your location, we saw $7 per gallon in California not too long ago. We did. And groceries have spiked as well, as Julie has just alluded to. And I'm, I read recently that egg prices year over year have gone up 30%. Eggs, for God's sake, have gone up 30%. That's incredible. I mean, we're seeing, again, inflation happen in all categories. And this is unusual. In our adult lives, in all of your adult lives, there's always been inflation. The Fed has said they want the inflation rate to be around 2%. Well, we've always had inflation. That's what a lot of people, like when Julie and I sold real estate, and some of you in the Midwest can relate to this with the exception of maybe the last five years, real estate would quote unquote appreciate by 3% per year, let's say. And the 3% per year just happened to be the same as the inflation rate. So arguably, real estate really wasn't appreciating because everything else was inflating along with the cost of real estate. So if, for example, you bought a house in Columbus, Ohio, and let's say it was, you know, 10 years ago, and the house uh, was increased in value or cost by 3% year over year, but so did everything else. Uh, you really didn't get that. You didn't get ahead at all of what the cost of living is. And now versus if you bought a house, say, in Austin five years ago, and that house had doubled in value, 
and it, say the inflation rate had stayed at 3%, well, you would have actually increased your net worth in a meaningful way. You guys get it? So at the end of the day, inflation um, and appreciation in real estate kind of act the same way. And that's important to remember because in real estate, unlike every other business, when things inflate, you guys earn more money. So I want you to think about this. When people talk about the inflation rate, what that really should mean is that you're getting a raise because that's what it means. So Julie and I are working on something that's going to be about what the projected home sales are going to be for the next couple of years. But I'll just give you guys some numbers because this is interesting. In 2021, correct me if I'm saying this wrong. Sure. Uh, in 2021, there were 6.1 million home sales. 2022, there's expected to be 5.1 million home sales. And 2023, there's expected to be something like 4 point something, 4 point like 3, 4.2 million home sales. Now, this was uh, basically a guess. That's all it really is. And it could be completely wrong. But at the end of the day, the projected amount of commission that agents will be earning will be the same as, what was it, Julie, 2019 or 2020? Well, that's right. So look at it this way. Go ahead. Well, so the moral of the story is, is that if you take out the boom years from COVID, which that was an aberration in the marketplace, and you go back to what would have been seen as a uh, Mike Dupreet actually did a great article on this. Yes. And if you went back to what would have been a normal market, say in 2019 and 2020, took out the COVID years of, you know, really 2020, 2021, and you get back to a normal, uh, say, appreciation or inflation cycle, you'll see what's going to happen next year is that because of the increase in home values, even though there'll be fewer transactions, the amount of commission that will be earned will be about the same as it was in 2019. And I want you guys to think about that. So there'll be fewer transactions that you guys will be making a hell of a lot more money on. That's kind of think, incredible. Think of how awesome that is in a way, right? This is kind of the silver lining to inflation. For sure. That means that you have a choice. You can sell more homes and make even more money. Or you can save, do the same or maybe even fewer because the prices have gone up and along with that, your commission, but you're certainly not earning anything less. So just through first quarter, uh, the 2022 average nationwide real estate appreciation was 19.1%. That's the highest level in 45 years. And, you know, try to get a 19.1% raise to a salaried position. Good luck with that. Well, but th that's right there. That's phenomenal. Now, so here's the thing with the inflation rate, when you hear the inflation rates at 8.2% or whatever. Uh, and we won't get into this, but what they're doing is they take a basket of goods and, the, you know, eggs and gas and other things are all factored into it. But what's not factored into it is the cost of real estate. So if they were to actually factor in, include in the basket of goods, when including the inflation rate. So they uh, just breaking this down. Uh, they'll take a basket of whatever it is, goods, consumer items, and they'll then compare what those things cost today versus what they cost 12 months ago, and that's where they come up the inflation rate. What is not figured into the inflation rate is the uh, inflated cost of real estate, renting included. Now, if they were to do that, because a lot of people have done that to figure out what the true inflation rate is, guess what? 20%. So when you hear real estate, as Julie just said, has gone up by 19.1% in the last 12 months, well, that's probably realistically, what the true inflation rate is. And if you think about that, ask yourself, what isn't about 20% more expensive than it was 12 months ago? Isn't that interesting? Some things are even more. Look at the cost of used cars, up over 40%. Well, yeah, I mean, all that. And it is extraordinary. And, and it is fascinating, too. Uh, this is a quick aside. When I, You can always tell how long somebody's been in the real estate business by how they're reacting to this particular um, I sent, I, we're going to call this an economic setback or, you know, really a reset, whatever words you want to use. But it's fascinating because whenever you see somebody talking about the fact that there's going to be real estate depreciation and there's going to be a loss of value of assets, I know instantly that they haven't been in the real estate business very long or they haven't been in the real estate business in a meaningful way for very long. Because if they had been, they would realize that all the factors that led to the great housing crash, n basically none of them exist other than, you know, we're talking about housing, right? None of the other factors exist. So what we're going to see is not a housing crash. Now, the only reason we might be wrong, and I'll explain to you guys here in a second why we don't even think the probability of us being wrong with regards to the, what I'm about to say is even in the cards. But the only reason we might be wrong is if there was mass unemployment. If there was mass unemployment, like something the country has never seen before, and that would have been caused by the Fed raising rates too fast and, 
you know, you heard, you know, basically businesses start laying off people and all that. Then you could actually have loss of asset value, right? So you could have super high inflation and you could have asset depreciation. But right now we're so far away from that. The unemployment rate is what, 3% or something? Yeah, right around It's super low. There's people looking for, uh, you know, uh, employees everywhere you look. Everywhere. Well, so that's the difference, right? You might lose your job. You might get laid off. You might even quit. But the rest of the story is, how likely are you to replace that job, assuming that you want to and need to? Well, you you actually, again, we're working on, obviously, podcasts all day. I mean, yeah. but you were telling me that there was the unemployment rate in 2007 or something, wasn't it? Didn't you tell us close to 10%? At the peak, which was like between the end of 2008 and nine, it was just under 11%, which is the highest it's ever been since the Great Depression. And we are, you know, bubbling around three, which is very healthy. So that's the thing. And you're right. Everywhere we go, we see people, you know, hiring for various jobs and advertising for that. The thing that hasn't happened yet that will have to happen, and it's the next cycle in all of this, you will see, um, again, these are the wild cards, which might, you know, frankly, cause us to be wrong about our projections. But any business that was highly leveraged or was predicated on their ability to take out more debt or has short-term debt that's now adjusting. And frankly, there's a lot of real, publicly traded real estate brokerages that are in that position. They have a lot of publicly, they have a lot of short-term debt that's adjusting, and they're not going to be able to afford the debt payments when they have to refinance that debt. There are a lot of companies like that. There are a lot of companies that are that are completely built, maybe even without them knowing it, on people's ability to get credit. And I remember uh, you and I were, and this was back in 2007 or 2008, mm -hmm. you and I had this uh, impromptu lunch with the largest Harley Davidson franchise owner in Southern California. <laughs> yeah. You remember that? Uh -huh. And he was asking our opinions about what was going to happen to, you know, his business in particular, because he was a total passive investor. I think he had three huge stores and sold billions mm -hmm. of these bikes, you know, the whole thing. And I asked him questions to say, well, how do people pay for your motorcycles? And he said, well, most of them pay cash. And I said, so, okay, where's the, or, or they use Harley credit. And I said, well, where does that money come from for the ones that pay cash? And he said he didn't know. And I said, well, I know. They're borrowing it from their homes. And if they don't have the ability to borrow uh, from their homes anymore, how are they going to buy your bikes? And sure enough, it was within two years that he was down to one store. And that's what's going to happen to a lot of businesses. So the next thing we're going to see in this cycle are a lot of businesses that were overly dependent on credit you know, knowingly or unknowingly, they're going to take a step back. And that's going to be something that, again, could contribute to unemployment, but it's too soon to tell. It's definitely too soon to tell. These things don't happen overnight. So how will inflation affect your real estate practice? Let's make this practical and tactical. This is part one of a two, possibly three-part series. Point number one, your most shaky buyers, you probably already know this, your most shaky buyers will likely take themselves out of the market. First-time buyers, small down payment, lower credit scores, or high ratio buyers will suffer first, and certainly if they have a combination of those factors. Know your clients and recognize that you need more leads and appointments than before. Now, that said, there are still strong buyers who are either very well qualified or paying all cash. Do you know who's who? Or did you stop following up on all your buyer leads when rates went up, assuming that they were all out? By the way, this leads to some, uh, going back to something we talked about recently, um, we're doing. In, we're we're going to send out a poll to new coaching clients and to other people too. And one of the questions we're going to ask, because Julie and I started learning more about this maybe two weeks ago, was what agents are paying on average for buyer leads. Mm -hmm. And we've been hearing from all of our top top agents, and these are agents that are selling hundreds of millions of dollars per year in real estate. Asking them, and some of them do buy buyer leads. Asking them where what are they paying for buyer leads. And the, the cost per buyer lead from Zillow in particular, we heard on the low end was 400 bucks. The high end was around $600, but averaged out right, would be $500. That's per lead. That's not per closing. That's not a referral and fee. And that's not paid at closing. Right. So how, front. so how is it that Zillow, for example, is able to charge that much for just a, you know, frankly, a dubious lead? Uh, it's because there's still so many agents out there that are willing to pay it. There's fewer leads, fewer leads with uh, the same number, if not more agents chasing those leads. It's driving the lead acquisition costs through the roof. This is not sustainable. There will not be that many agents that are willing to pay 500 or can pay $500 a lead. So you could see what the backlash is going to be for Zillow's uh, bottom line as they are fine. They're going to have to lower their cost per lead. But their cost of generating those leads has actually increased as well because of inflation. So this is one of those quagmires that a lot of companies are going to find themselves in that we just told you about. Point number two, Julie. Point number two, you will feel even more pressure to be a listing agent. Listings are your insurance policy against feast and famine. So know your magic number. That's the number of active listings for you to carry at all times 
in order to meet or exceed your monthly income goals. That's something that we go over. It's a core piece of our coaching and it's in the real estate treasure map. If you're a Premier Coaching member, you know exactly what your magic number is. By, by the way, Premier Coaching members, make sure you guys update your real estate treasure map. Even if you've already done it for this year, update it now because a lot of your factors have changed. You, hopefully you're realizing that. So go back, you, you know, maybe before you were predicating your number on a lot of buyer sides, go back and really do the magic number formula correctly. The magic number is simply the number of listings you need at all times, as Julie just said, to meet or exceed your financial goals. And that is what we really focus all of our coaching on because it makes things so much clearer and easier to understand. You, If you are, for example, in all of your markets, if you had 10 listings at all times, no matter what the market's doing, you're going to be right as rain because you're going to have one or two of those that are going to sell. Maybe three of those are going to sell per month. And in most markets, that's going to earn you twenty to $30,000 per month. And that's minimum. That's not even taking into account what having those listings will generate for you, selling it yourself in some cases, all the buyer leads that come from that. You will not have any business paying for leads and, when you have listings. Well, right. And so some of you, you'd be great with three listings at all times or five listings at all times. You get the point? Now is the best time and probably, well... I'm going to, let me think. No, for sure. Now is the best time in the last 15 years to become a listing agent. Mm -hmm. And the reasons are obvious, or they should be. Sellers are becoming way more choosy who they list with. Uh, frankly, sellers are not going to be so inclined just to list with a center of influence, a past client type agent. They're going to be, they might interview that agent, but they're going to make that agent compete for the listing. Uh, sellers, the expired listings are the single biggest opportunity in real estate right now. And by expired listings, I mean, you have to learn how to proactively lead generate to them. You have to call them. You have to know what to say and how to say it. And all this leads you in one direction. That's to become a coaching client. We made it very easy for you. You can join Premier Coaching for free. Text the word Premier to 47372. Text the word Premier to 47372. When you do that, we're going to text you back a link and you can see what's uh, included with the free coaching membership. It's all there on that one page that you'll see as soon as you text the word Premier to 47372. If you prefer, you can go to members.timandjulieharris.com, members.timandjulieharris.com. But for sure, the easy button is just to text the word Premier, P-R-E-M-I-E-R -E -E to 47372. Yet there is still time for you guys to really create an amazing business going forward, but you're going to have to accept the fact it has to be skills-based. This market's going to be about what you know, what you know, not necessarily who you know. The whole idea of trying to make yourself famous and all these trendy things that are going to be in the rear view soon as far as lead generation, embrace the fact that that creates more opportunities for agents that are skills-based. So text the word Premier to 47372 or just go to members.timandjulieharris.com. Remember when texting, message and data rates may apply. So point number three, there will be stiffer competition amongst agents because the weak will wash out of this market. We're already seeing this happen. So be one of the survivors. Learn from experienced agents and brokers like our coaches and upgrade your listing skills immediately. Yep. Are, are you using, for example, are you using a proven pre-listing package or do you know how to pre-qualify? How are your closing skills? You, you know, there's a seven-step listing process that will be taught to you when you join Premier Coaching. It's very simple, but the skills involved, well, frankly, the whole process is very simple once you learn what to say and how to say it. And it doesn't take you that long. One of the things that we insist that all of you do is learn on the job so you can earn on the job. And the first step is obviously proactively lead generating, then it's pre-qualified, then it's presenting, then it's negotiating, then it's closing. And in there is obviously very good lead follow-up as well. So the, the you know, you have to remember to send the pre-listing pack and do things like that. So at the end of the day, this is a very proven drilled down system and process that you can follow. Many of you are fooling yourselves, frankly, thinking you can buy your way or brand your way into success. And you can't. You never really could, by the way. And you're discovering that now. Here, this might be interesting to you. For those of you who are... Um, really addicted to the branding and the marketing and you thinking that's a, your way forward. What is the first thing that businesses do? Big businesses, like at scale businesses, Google and all these other businesses. What's the first thing that they do when the market shifts? They stop all marketing and advertising. Why? Because that is the easiest thing for them to cut out because it's the thing that produces the least results for the most amount of money. That's why. And they always lean back into being proactively generators. 
why don't you copy what big businesses have done forever and stop trying to, you know, essentially hack your way to success? Guys, you can do this in this market. You can do this because of this market. Don't let anyone think that the best days in real estate are behind you. And if you're around anybody like that, if you're in a broker just like that or a team that's like that, where people are just basically licking their wounds and hoping and praying this down market doesn't last forever, you're in the wrong environment. There is no such thing as a down market. There's just the market. And this is your market to make your market. You just have to have the skill set necessary. And if you're around a bunch of people that are washing you with negative mindset stuff, get the hell away from them. You have to. You have to do it for yourself. You have to do it with your family, your loved ones. You have to do it for your future. So just keep all these things in mind, guys. Who you surround yourself with right now, including your broker, Julie really Matters. One of the best decisions Julie and I made um, years, well, now three and a half years ago, was joining EXP Realty. For sure, that is the best brokerage I can possibly suggest to all of you in a marketplace like this. If you've not yet chosen your sponsor and you're looking to join EXP Realty or just curious, text me directly on my cell phone, 512-758-0206. Again, it's 512-758-0206. And you and I will have a conversation about why EXP is the next natural progression in your real estate career. Yes, now point number four Results of inflation, you're going to see sellers selling for normal reasons. See, I think this is a good thing because the ones that are serious are very obvious versus being covered up by the ones that are aspirationally priced, for example. So the most serious sellers in the new market are selling because they have to, not just because they want to. Sellers who are moving due to things like relocation, probate, death, divorce, downsizing, your pre-qualification script, you do have one, don't you, will draw out all of these motivations. <clears throat> now, point number five Fortunately, home prices will continue to rise, and this is good for both your commission and the seller's net proceeds. It's worth you and I, it, let's interject. So we're working on, again, a series of, con, of, of uh, podcasts, and Julie and I have searched high and low. Mm -hmm. We've burned up the Google machine yeah. <laughs> looking for anybody that's projecting the home prices won't continue to rise. Now, remember, we had a little monologue a second ago about inflation and appreciation. They kind of feel the same at the end of the day. They act slightly differently, but they feel the same. Your house value goes up. So we could not find one single person that was brazen enough to predict home value depreciation. And why? Because they know there's, well, hopefully, they know that there's inflation and there cannot be home value depreciation, deflation as long as there's inflation. If rent prices keep rising, as the prices of everything keep rising, this isn't everything. This is really, for the first time in all of our lives, and I'm 52, Julie's slightly younger than me. We're not allowed to say her age. Indeed. Right. But you know, some of you are older. Some of you are, you know, uh, younger than us. This is the first time in our lifetimes when there's been a reset of pricing of everything. Before you could point out and you could see different, um, you know, things that were rising in price. Maybe it was real estate. Maybe it was, it could have been art. It could have been just different things, right? Different things would appreciate at an outpaced in an outpaced uh, way versus everything else. So if everything else was inflating by two or three percent per year, and something went up by ten percent, you're seven percent ahead of the market. You guys following me in all this? So this is the first time that everything is resetting in price. Can you think of a single thing that's cheaper than this time last year? Thirty percent increase in the cost of eggs, for God's sake! <laughs> I mean, if that doesn't tell the whole story, nothing will. Yeah, that's right. The only thing that I found, and this is interesting, and it's also because of COVID. One thing that is less... Let me guess. What? Masks. <laughs> no, but probably, yeah. <laughs> I, I would imagine. Uh, the, the cost of shipping a container. Oh, no. you Actually, there's a preface with that. Yes. It was a shop. Cost of shipping a container overseas. Overseas out. and in 2020. Okay, so what was everybody doing? We're all hunkered down ordering crap online all the time, and there wasn't enough to go around. There were problems with the ports, yada, yada. There, That's it, the only thing. It, well, what, yes, this is actually something Elon Musk talked about. Mm -hmm. It's a very interesting point. That's so. so if you're wanting to ship something to China, for example, it's like super cheap because the U.S. isn't making anything to export to foreign countries, right? All the containers are full coming here, but they're empty going back. So yeah, that's true. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, and I think one other kind of bright spot is some of the cost of new construction is starting to go down for builders. So that's mm -hmm. kind of nice, but everything else that we deal with on a day-to-day -day basis from groceries to gas, to all of our, you know, buying another car, all of that is going up. But along with that is also, as we mentioned before, your commission. So here's a question for you. Do all of your clients, your past clients, your friends, your neighbors know what their homes are worth today. Mm -hmm. Don't be mad if they list with somebody else if you're not speaking with them, especially if they're one of those, you know, have to sell sellers who's very serious. 
Uh, again, economists are currently predicting an additional 6 to 9% appreciation for the remainder of this year. That's a lot, especially, I mean, look at what the average sale prices are. That's a lot of money. How many, if I were to call your, your beloved database, as you guys all call it, your database and ask them, you know, are you interested in finding out what your home is worth in today's market? Probably 90% of them are. Some of them are have to sell sellers or at least pretty motivated to sell. Uh, some of them just found out they got relocated. But the problem that I see, I see agents posting this, talking to each other, comes out in our questions on our daily um, coaching sessions, is they're a little bit nervous. And this is why we do this, educate them, motivate them, and get them into action on the podcast. They're a little nervous to talk to people when there's so many negative headlines. And that's why we bring you the headline, but also translate it for you. So for example, anybody that says, you know, year over year homes are, are you know, uh, I can't even say the it's word because the they're not depreciating. It's all the BS headlines are out there yeah. that are trying to – and let's just really drill – you just said two yeah. things that are mm-hmm. freaking gold. I hope you guys heard what she said. Number one, if you're calling somebody up and you're telling them that their house is worth 19.1% more than it was this time last year, chances are that's going to be a good call. Yes. And if, you, if they've been there assuming for – Assuming you make it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Right. Assuming you make it. And if you if they bought it two years ago or three years ago – Even better. Even better. You are able to basically call them and you're Ed McMahon delivering the golden ticket. You're Santa Claus. You're all good things. And you're telling them that basically their house is – uh, you know, you can call it appreciation, but it inflated in value by probably 50%. In some markets, it's even more like jo- uh, John Weber's market in Oregon. Uh, in what, Boise. In Boise. Idaho. It was like 61% it's or crazy, something. Yeah. yeah, it's crazy. So yeah. Okay. So if we actually see that a little bit of the value that was uh, you know added to homes because of appreciation, if we lose a few points, who gives a rat's ass? Seriously. It just doesn't matter. Yeah, there's something that um, our, but, our friend Russ Phillips uh, posted that in the past, I, I have to look up how many years, I think it was like 20 or 25 years that home prices have gone up 230%. So why are we crying about you know a little wiggly adjustment? You're still way, way, way up. Well, it's because it gets clicks. That's yeah. why. Well, sure. That's why. And, and because you're mistakenly, some of you, comparing it to anything that happened in the pandemic years, 2020 and 2021, I think will be historically looked at as the pandemic era, even though eras are usually longer than that, the effects that it had may be a two or three year effect. But to think that you're going to compare what's happening in a normalizing market versus something that was very much not normal, that's like using apples to oranges. Those aren't comps. We're going to, you know what, you need to do a podcast. You and I will write together today if you want to where we're going to say why this is, we've talked about this on the podcast, but have we ever actually done one drill down podcast explaining why this is not like last time? Have we done one like yeah, that? You're shaking your head at me. We did a series, me? but it, oh, it's we did? <laughs> probably, I don't know, 90 days old, but we can update it. We do need to do that. We because need I to... think the points have just gotten that much more salient. Oh, completely. And and that's really, at the end of the day, uh, what these guys need. They need the ammunition so that th- they're not secret agents. They're going to be going, you know, they're, they're afraid to talk about real estate. Yeah. They're afraid that it's going to be bad news and they don't have the facts and the figures and they're going to be caught on their heels not knowing what to say. We just told you what to say. Mm-hmm. Every, you are the bringer of good news, folks. Someone could have had a bad day, just put you know a full tank of seven dollar gas in their tank, and had to spend forty seven dollars spend forty seven dollars on a dozen of eggs. But you're going to be the one person that brings them good news, telling them they won the lottery because they bought a house two years ago. That's you guys true. get it? There's no downside in those conversations. Well, so don't hide out from opportunity. Right now, the opportunity is changing from before when everybody wanted to sell all the time and rates were so low that everybody qualified all the time. This is changing over to I think a very positive. Uh, maybe an unintended consequence, and that's that you will be working with very serious people. Maybe you'll have fewer in your lead list, right? Maybe you're not going to be, you know, just bursting at the seams with buyer leads, but the ones you have are going to be highly qualified, high credit, or all cash, and very serious. I think that's a good thing. And by the way, we know that there's a slowdown in home sales that's happened in the past 60 days. We can see it Um, we can see it from a bunch of different perspectives, but mostly we hear it from our coaching clients. And here's the reason why it's all the negative news. It's what happened. It's what's happening with, uh, you know, the interest rates and and all the rest of it. But the biggest reason is, and no one's talking about this is because it's a midterm election year. Every year when there's an election year, it slows down before the election. Then after the election, it's an explosion of activity. So what we are actually seeing and I know this sounds crazy and it's totally counterintuitive. We are seeing actually the building of what looks like it's going to be, we don't know how long it will last, but what's going to feel like a boom in the market. Because there are a lot of sellers that are going to um, see homes sell at a relatively quick pace, 
think that, okay, I was going to sell next year, but I'm going to sell now. I'm going to take myself out of the market now because this might be peak market. And there's a lot of buyers that have been sitting on the fence waiting for things to calm down. But really what's happening is the psychology of what's going on in the world right now. All this election mumbo jumbo, all this fear of interest rates. And I'm going to share this with you guys too. So we do think there's going to be a really what will feel like a housing boom that's going to happen over the next six to 12 months. And it won't be all at once too. It'll be slowly building. Um, we don't think, and you guys can hold us to this too, because Julie and I are researching the snot out of this point too, um, to try to invalidate what we're saying. We always come, Julie and I come up with our, our thesis, and then we try to prove ourselves wrong. We actually spend more time trying to prove ourselves wrong before we present it to you guys than we do coming up with the ideas in the first place. And we do. We yeah. research, and we talk to Every other morning. people. We ask people's opinions. Yeah. We don't think, you ready for this, listeners? You'll like it. We don't think the interest rates are going to be able to be uh, increased that much more. We do not think that the Fed's going to be able to raise rates much more than they already have. And matter of fact, you ready for this one? We think rates are going to actually go down leading into next year. We think that there'll be a leveling off, if not a decreasing in mortgage rates um, into next year. And here's the simple reason why. The Fed is, in raising rates, also raising the cost of their debt service. Now, Julie and I didn't know anything about any of this debt service, Fed rates, and all the rest of it maybe five years ago. And then we started paying attention to it because we knew it mattered. The uh, country owes $31 trillion right now. That mean, And most of the debt is short-term. These aren't 30-year treasuries or 50-year or 100-year treasuries. These are short-term treasuries, two years, five years. Research it yourself. You'll see what I'm talking about. That means when those things come due, the Fed has to then, in essence, refinance those to higher rates. More debt, it's going to be based on today's rates. The Fed is setting the, uh, it's believed that the rates, the Fed rate is going to go up to be over 4% which means the Fed's going to have to uh, pay 4% on the debt. Again, do your own homework, but I am oversimplifying it because we're not experts about this, but it's fascinating. So why does that matter, right? Who cares? The, the U.S. government can afford to pay its debt. Well, here's the problem. Because based on, and, I, and we'll give you the drill down numbers when we do this, but based on the actual amount of money that the U.S. government takes in per year from taxes and based on the cost of the debt service, if they raise rates much more than they already are raised, they're going to have to pay, if I remember correctly, something like a third or close to that to all the income that the government receives per year. Uh, they're going to have to pay that on debt service. So if they were to do that in order to slow down inflation, right, that means that they would have to stop uh, entitlements. In other words, the entitlements would have to be slashed and burned. Do you guys believe there's any political party on planet Earth, let alone in our country, that's going to tell people that are receiving Social Security and whatnot that they're not going to receive it anymore? Quite the opposite. Social Security payments went up by, what, 8.6% this year. I know because we have someone on Social Security that lives with us. And no, it's not Julia or myself. It's my 82-year-old mother. Yeah, good luck calling her and letting her know that kind of right. thing. Right. You guys get it? So it's unsustainable. So what are they going to have to do then? They're going to have to raise taxes. Can they raise taxes enough to cover up that gap? No way, especially if we're in a recession. You guys get it? So Julie and I do not think that there's going to be much more of an increase in mortgage rates because it just... Uh, you know, fiscally doesn't make sense. Well, that's right. And at the same time, we're all kind of adjusting to the new normal. Do we think it's going to go back down to two and a half to 3%? Unlikely, but it will come down. In fact, week over week, it's come down from about seven and a quarter last week to 6.8 this week. Right. You know, it, it bounces around and bubbles up. And This podcast is a part of the C-Suite Radio Network. For more top business podcasts, visit c-suiteradio.com.